Okay. Are you rolling? I'm going to tell you the truth about these lenses. They're absolutely stunning. Big news for Fujifilm users. We now have Sigma lenses coming to the Fuji X-Mount A I'm filming. <laughs> and I have three new lenses here in my pockets that we are going to talk about today. And this is big news. So much so that I came all the way down to the city in the rain to tell you more about it. <laughs> okay. Hi everyone, Sam here. Welcome back to another video. And let me show you these secret lenses that no one has seen yet. Except Canon users and Sony users and Panasonic users. Uh, the first one is the 30mm 1.4. Then we have the 60mm 1.4. And the last one is... The 56 1.4. So these are three of the contemporary line from Sigma. Which are, as I said, already out for other mounts, but now they're available for Fuji. And Sigma hasn't really released any lenses for Fujifilm yet. And us Fujifilm users, we, we don't really have that many options. Yeah, we have the Chinese options, Samyang, Viltrox, and all of that, but Sigma, you know? If I can have a Sigma or a Samyang, I think I will prefer a Sigma. Not to sound like a Sigma sales person. <laughs> Little disclaimer here, obviously Sigma sent me these lenses to review, but they don't get to see this video before it's out. And whatever I say in this video is my own personal opinion. So today I'm going to test these lenses here in the city of Hamburg, in the real world, in the outside world, not in a photo lab. Because optically we already know what to expect, because these lenses already exist and there are a bunch of reviews online. But I want to see how this performs on a Fujifilm camera in terms of autofocus and how it looks on a Fujifilm camera as well, because, you know, these look kind of like Sony lenses. I'm also going to test them for video, do some vlogging tests on the 60mm. But before we do that, let's find a quieter place um, and discuss these lenses in more detail. Ah, much quieter here, much better. Okay, uh, let's do a quick, let's give you a quick overview. We have three new lenses and let's look at them. Let's do a little close up. So we have a 16 mm 1.4, um, which translates to a 24 full frame equivalent. As you can see, it is uh, fairly long, but it balances nicely on my X-H1. And then we have a 30 mm 1.4, which is very light by the way. Um, and the 30 mm is interesting because it, I think it translates to a 45 uh, full frame equivalent. Um, which is the lens we don't have in the Fuji system yet. So it's a very good normal focal length. And then we have a 56 mm 1.4. So all these lenses are 1.4. And this is uh, 85 in full frame terms, which is great for portraits, but also I think it's actually very suitable for street photography. 85 is definitely very cool for street photography because you can separate the background and you have lots of compression, but it's it doesn't feel like a tele uh, lens, but it also doesn't feel like a 35 or 50. Um, so I like having this lens in my bag. And to be honest, as a first impression, I think I prefer this one out of these three. Um, now the 30 could be a very cool lens for street photography, but I think Street Life Samuel will talk about it later. Um, and then we have a 16, which is very wide. And I have experience shooting a 60 on the street. I had the 16 2.8. And it's very useful for speed photography, especially in tight places. But this is not as compact anymore. But so isn't my 18mm 1.4 from Fujifilm, which is probably the same size. But the weight is different. This feels, this feels a little lighter than my 18 1.4. Um, they all come with these uh, lens hoods. I really like the rounded ones. And overall, I really like the design. Um, of these Sigma lenses. So these are lenses from the contemporary line, which are lenses that combine, you know, quality um, and lightweightnessness or compactness. <laughs> and they offer a good price to value ratio. I don't know the prices yet, but they're probably going to be the same as they are already for the Sony and Canon or L-mount uh, system. So that makes them a very affordable option for Fujifilm users. And I would love to know how these compare to the Fujifilm equivalents. For example, we have the 56 1.2. I'm pointing on the wrong lens. So we have a 56 1.2 from Fujifilm. 
can't really talk about that lens because I've never used it. And then we have a 60mm 1.4 from Fujifilm as well, which is kind of old by now, but it's still um, very highly regarded as a, as a good lens, as a good Fujifilm lens. I haven't used that one either, but I have, as I said, the 18 1.4 which costs a thousand bucks and is amazing. And I have to say, I can already tell you, this one doesn't compete with the 18 1.4. The Fuji non lens is just a little bit better, but for the price you pay here, this might be the better option. If you want me to read out uh, the spec sheet, I won't do that. Um, you can go to other reviews or go online. I'm more interested in the practical experience of using these lenses. So I'm going to go back to the city and we will do some street shooting and I will talk more about my experience using these lenses. Okay, so we are back in the city uh, here in Hamburg at the harbor and the weather is pretty nice, but you don't know this, two days ago we had some a very heavy storm here in North Germany and uh, three of my trees on my property fell down. It was crazy, I was so scared. And also, I couldn't get to the city today um, by train. I had to take a bus that took me more than an hour. But now I made it and I'm excited for the weather. It looks, it looks good. It, it's supposed to rain later, so we better hurry. But um, yeah, I'm going to test these lenses now, finally. And we're going to take some pictures. <laughs> okay, so first lens I'm going to try is the 56mm 1.4, not the 65 millimeter 1.4 which i said in the beginning optically uh, just from the design aspect i think it's the favorite of the three for me personally i like how it looks on the xs10 i'm talking too much let's take some pictures i don't usually shoot long lenses but whenever i do i naturally uh, compose in, in a portrait orientation it just works so much better Hey, du bist in meinem Bild. Geh raus aus meinem Kunstwerk. Oh, also kein Screen. <laughs> Isn't it nice? It started raining. <laughs> but luckily these lenses are uh, partly weather sealed. I think I don't think they are sealed, but the mount is sealed. So at least there's no rain coming into the sensor, but it would be nice to have a weather sealed lens. Oh shit! <laughs> oh shit! So we are going to switch the GoPro just for a second and find the place that is a little bit more uh, dry. Oh shit, my GoPro is getting wet. Isn't it waterproof? Oh yeah, but it's new, so I'm, I'm bathing it. <laughs> Okay, here's my first initial impression. Uh, the 56 1.4 is a lot of fun. 85 millimeter is uh, very cool. I'm not used to it, but it's very nice. And you get nice separation uh, in the background. A single AF is fast, but I had some issues using the um, AF, using AFC and tracking. Um, it's not very confident. It's, it's doing a little bit of hunting. So now I'm using back button focusing to focus and then recompose. And that seems to do the best job and I will show you I will show you the autofocus speed here so wait so we're focusing on the background on bellow so it's it's fast but it's not it's not it's it's a little bit but as I said in this video I think I hope I said it already um, the firmware is not final so there might be some improvements coming now I'm using AFC and tracking and this is what I use on my Fuji lenses which works which works great on the XS10. Um, but you see here it is hunting a little bit. It's like it's pulsating the AF. So even though it looks like it is in focus, it is constantly moving. So at the moment it's not really useful for me. So I'm going to stick to um, back button focusing. And this does seem to work. 
<laughs> it's nice being able to uh, shoot a scene f in a distance and not having to go close. Okay, now I'm on the 30 mm 1.4. 30 is a 45 in full frame terms. So I should be very comfortable using this for street photography. It's also the lightest lens out of these three, um, but it's a little longer than the 56. The 56, by the way, uh, Bello is filming on the 56 right now, and he filmed on the 60 mm before this shot. So, but now he's on the telly, um, so you can see how that looks for video. Let's go. taking pictures of a, of a puddle. It looks kind of cool. So here are my impressions on the 30mm 1.4. Um, I think it's a great focal length for street photography. You don't need to go super close but you still get a sense of intimacy. I had some difficulties uh, finding some interesting scenes and I'm really rushing through this section here of the video because it's so cold and I can't really feel my fingers. But I think it showed what you can do with this lens. Now, I already know that it is a little bit soft, wide open, a 1.4, but at 2.8, it is uh, very sharp. Now, I also brought my uh, Ricoh GS3X and that is a 40 millimeter equivalent. And I'm curious to know how the performance is, because if this is very good at 2.8, and this is also 2.8, um, this might be a good option for, for Fujifilm users. So I'm going to show you a side-by-side -side comparison of something I shot here, and then you will be the judge. Sorry, I got distracted. Oh, I have the wrong lens on my camera. It was too wide. <laughs> so I'm on the 60 1.4 right now. This is the last lens that we are going to test today. Uh, it's also the longest, as you can see. It's also very heavy compared to the other Sigma lenses, but I, I still think it's compact enough um, because I'm used to using my 18 1.4 from Fujifilm that is uh, a little bit shorter than this one. And I did a little comparison uh, at home. Maybe I show it here. And the 80mm 1.4 definitely is uh, a lot better when it comes to image quality, but you also pay more than double the price. So this can still be a good alternative. This is a 24 equivalent, not my favorite focal length. I prefer 28, but um, for crowded places, this could be uh, perfect. So let's take some pictures, wide open, even though it's sunny. And also, uh, of course, I will close down the aperture so you get a sense of the image quality. Nine. Scheiße, my, my, my battery died. Shit. Oh, my subject just escaped. <laughs> Oh, that was a nice moment, damn it. But that's not the lens fault, that's my fault, my camera's fault. So I have troubles uh, focusing with the 16 1.4. Um, it does hunt a lot, 
Oh, lass doch lieber einen Schatten. Wow, what a master, masterpiece. I will name this masterpiece the empty composition. <laughs> oh, I, I, I just realized I really don't like 24 millimeter. <laughs> I see you. I can see you, you stalker. Stop stalking me. So we are taking a little coffee break now and I think we are done today. Um, it felt very rushed and I'm sure I didn't get any good pictures, but hopefully it gives me neither. I'm sorry. <laughs> hopefully uh, it gives you some ideas of uh, what you can expect using these lenses. Now I'm going to go home, look at the files and then uh, I will tell you more about my thoughts once I'm back home. Sigma. I just realized I forgot to test uh, the lenses for video. So we're going to do some video tests here with Bello at this spot. Hello. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Look at these. Look at these. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> hey, geh mal normal. Was? Komm mal normal. Nur normal, weil du bist zu schnell und das ist zu okay, schwierig. Okay. Ich kann nicht normal. Ich muss ein bisschen in Vogue haben. <lacht> ich kann nicht so viel oder wie denkst du? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll turn it again. Give it away. Und so viel drehen hier, ne? Ja, Mann, das hat richtig genervt. Aber das heißt, es ist wieder eine elektrische Übersetzung. Ja. Hat sich gar nicht so angefühlt. Das ist ein Pluspunkt. Ja. <lacht> oh. <laughs> so we're going to do a little vlogging test. This is the 16mm 1.4 from Sigma, shooting at f1.4. Uh, and this is the kind of field of view you get on a 16mm, um, which is okay. It's, it's good for vlogging. And we will compare it to my Fujinon 18mm 1.4, which uh, is 2mm tighter. But I want to see how the autofocus compares. So I'm just going to walk a little bit. And it should be... On my face, I'm using uh, AFC with face tracking. Keep in mind that the Sigma is not using the final firmware yet, so there might be some improvements coming, but from uh, this little test here, do, does look very good. Whoa. My arm is getting tired. <laughs> okay, so now we are on my Fujinon 18 mm 1.4 at 1.4, and as you can see, um, the field of view is a little tighter. Now I'm going to walk. And again, I'm using AFC face tracking. And in my experience, this lens is very confident when it comes to AFC in stills mode, but also in video mode. But it's not perfect. Uh, I wouldn't 100% rely on AFC, but, uh, but it seems to do a good job right now. Now, compared to the Sigma uh, 16 mm 1.4, do you see a difference? I go close and far. Let's do a little low light test here in my garage, if you know what I mean. <laughs> um, this is the Sigma 16 1.4 at 1.4. And I think this is a good test um, because Fujifilm cameras often struggle in this kind of light. Um, I'm at ISO 800 
And if we have, uh, if we move over here, uh, especially with backlight, um, focusing struggles a lot here usually. So how is the Sigma performing? I'm going to walk a little bit. Am I still in focus or not? Face tracking, not uh, eye tracking, but face tracking. Okay, let's switch to the Fujinon. And now we are on the Fujinon 80mm 1.4. And I don't know if I started here, but let's just move a little bit. This is me against some backlight. Let's walk. And this is 18 millimeter, so it's a little tighter. Um, how's the autofocus performing? Should be good. Looks good so far. I should have done this with the Sigma as well. But uh, I think this is enough to show you uh, how the Sigma performs in uh, low light. <laughs> okay, I'm back home and I had some time looking at my files now and I spent around a week uh, using these Sigma lenses. I'm filming on the 16 1.4 at the moment, by the way, at 1.4. And I think uh, this is a nice look for, for streaming. Uh, you could use it for your Zoom calls. And I've used it on one, one Zoom call and I got some uh, compliments. So it does work well for, for streaming and this kind of stuff. So obviously this video wasn't, wasn't really a deep dive into these lenses. It was more of a first look um, because there is no point talking about them optically if there are already reviews out there and these lenses have been out for a few years already for other mounts. But I wanted to show you how they look like on, on Fuji cameras and also how, how they feel and how they operate. So I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience. Um, I had a good time uh, at the harbor using these lenses, even though it was raining uh, very strongly sometimes. And uh, let's talk about the non-existence of weather sealing. Now, I'm still not 100% sure if they're weather sealed or not, but my guess is they are not sealed, only the mount is. But they are still working fine and uh, they got very wet, especially this one here, the 56 1.4. And they didn't clean the, the lens element, the front element, and they look fine. They look like new, so they must have some good coatings. <laughs> and I think these lenses fit very well on the X-H1 or X-S10. Um, I can't show you how they look on an X-Pro body or something like that, but my guess would be that it still would work. Of course, we don't have an aperture ring, which is very... Fuji, uh, typical for Fujifilm lenses. Did I miss an aperture ring? Sometimes, but I'm I'm so used to using the front and back dial, um, so it's not a big deal. But that is something you need to take into into consideration, um, because most Fujifilm lenses, I don't have one here at the moment, have aperture rings. There's also no switch. There's no switch for autofocus and manifocus, but most Fujifilm cameras. Um, have these um, autofocus uh, switches on the body. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a little disappointed when it comes to autofocus, I have to say, although I've been told that they're going to improve it. And um, so there wasn't really a point of showing you the autofocus performance because it, it, it will probably change. How much it will change, I don't know. I hope, I sincerely hope, uh, Sigma, if you're watching, that you um, work on on the autofocus, especially in continuous mode. And when tracking subjects, the AF was uh, hunting a lot and I missed a few shots because of that. So it's not really something I would use at the moment. They do work uh, very well sometimes, but as you saw in some of my outside examples, um, they hunt a lot, especially the 60 millimeter. That one is really emotional. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. It's not really um, confident. And the other lenses, the 30 millimeter, it's, it's very good for autofocusing and the 56 as well. A little slow, but um, at least uh, it's, it's not hunting a lot. Now I have to talk a little bit about image quality as well, because most of you who are watching are probably not familiar with these lenses. If you're a Fujifilm user, then you probably never considered Sigma lenses. From what I saw on my images that I took on that day uh, at the harbor, I'm satisfied, the quality was okay, but because I think the, the focusing was also sometimes not hitting, um, I got some blurry images. Uh, when the focus uh, was perfect, then um, the sharpness was pretty decent. 
corner sharpness seems to be okay. Now, I didn't really do that much pixel peeping. Um, by the way, if you want to see uh, the full RAW files or if you want to download them, uh, they will be available for my channel members. So if you are a member, look out for the community post for that. Um, so you can download these files and play with them. Sharpness is decent, um, but in my experience, it, I need to stop down the aperture at least to 2.8 or f4. But even then, sometimes at f8, I wasn't 100% happy, but don't take it uh, take it with a grain of salt because I don't use my Fujifilm cameras for stills. But I think for people who are considering one of the 1.4 aperture Fujinon lenses, um, if image quality is your top priority, I, I still would recommend going for native lenses. But if you mainly do street photography and the occasional low light shot here and there, then um, these are totally fine and um, it will be hard to differentiate them just based on, um, let's say, a print. Of course, if you do pixel peeping, you can see the differences. And when we look at the price, um, around 400 uh, euro for, for these lenses, uh, these are not a bad idea. Um, if you can live without having the Fujifilm look, um, because these lenses don't really look like Fujifilm lenses, but it's kind of refreshing and uh, personally I I think they look very good on, on at least my Fujifilm cameras. Yeah, I don't know what else to say. I think we have to wait until these lenses are out and get the final firmware in order to judge them for their performances. Um, but this is so far what I experienced. And would I buy one of these for myself? Um, it's, it really it's really hard for me to, de to decide between these three. Uh, I would probably get the 56 uh, 1 4 just because I don't have a 85 equivalent in my bag yet and it was quite fun um, shooting this focal length on the street but also I think the 16 millimeter is, is fun for video the 30 millimeter um, I would definitely consider for for something like street photography or documentary photography and I took a bunch of photos of my son uh, that I quite liked um, it has a little bit of a soft um, quality at 1.4 uh, but it gets a lot sharper once you stop it down but I was surprised uh, when I compared it to my G, uh, uh, GS3X how how good the GS3X is no it's not a commercial for Rico cameras <laughs> uh, I have to be careful because commenters will say I'm biased again um, okay so that's basically it I hope you enjoyed this video let me know in the comment section if you have any questions maybe I can answer them maybe I didn't answer some of your questions in the video uh, let me know see you in the next video very soon make sure to like and subscribe and all of that all of that shit <laughs> see you later bye bye ja hallo also ich bin jetzt hier in Hamburg und ja das Wetter ist echt scheiße egal Sigma <laughs> nice it started raining uh, luckily these lenses are weather sealed no, wait, they are not. <laughs> I think uh, the water went up, but no more. Klein Wichser here. So the ship just arrived and people are going to uh, board, on board. Alles scheiße auf jeden But I will mix it up a little bit, show you some wide open shots, but also some closed, closed open. <laughs> Fuji is einfach scheiße. Muss man einfach mal sagen. Hast natürlich schön alles aufgenommen, ne? Den, den Fuji Rand. Ey, geh mal kurz nach hinten.